Thousands and ones, empaths. What you got to understand is you are highly prone as an empath, as a chosen one, to come out of the situationship with the narcissist. And especially romantically, you find yourself going in to new relationships with people of similar toxic traits. And an empath can find themselves being lost in the cycle of abusive relationship after abusive relationship after abusive relationship. And I think it all comes down to taking the healing journey seriously. You see, when you first break up or whatever, you you go through bouts of loneliness. So a lot of people will try and fill that void with drugs, alcohol, other people. And I don't believe filling this void that you have in your life actually helps you by doing it in that way. And that void is actually created, that void that you feel, that emptiness that you feel, that's because you're disconnected from yourself. The narcissist has disconnected you from yourself, from what your true intentions for life were, for what your uh, dreams and aspirations were. It got contorted through being with the narcissist, your your world slowly closed in on you and limited your capability of dreaming, of having high pursuits, aims, goals, you know, something to set the standard for. You know, you, you lose yourself in this relationship. And that's why I think that going on a journey and taking the journey seriously, you know, if anyone says anything to you like oh you haven't moved on yet nah i needed to heal you know you tell them straight i needed to heal um there was a lot of inner work i needed to do to be prepared for me to go with someone else there was a lot of flaws within myself which i need to correct because we shouldn't have tolerated that abuse for the time that we did and A lot of the abuse was covert. We didn't even notice the abuse was happening. We were still addicted to the love bomb. And we perceived these people as true, authentic beings like ourselves. When they were just, in fact, mirroring us. So there was a few things that we overlooked and put ourselves in a dangerous situation with with scumbags, basically. We was around complete scum. Um... And they managed to do a number on us, you know, they managed to break our hearts, they managed to to hurt us deeply. And I think with all of that hurt, rage, pain, you're able to really shape yourself in the best possible way. Now, I'm still a work in progress, I must admit, I'm still a work in progress as well, but this is the kind of information that circulates around my consciousness. I feel like that there were a number of flaws within me, not through the devaluation or anything like that, but there was flaws within me where I was tolerating abuse, not just romantically, but in friendships as well. I was tolerating abuse from people that I shouldn't have necessarily tolerated abuse from. And the thing is, I wasn't even looking at it through the scope of abuse. I wasn't seeing the severity of their actions and how much of an impact it had on my daily existence. I wasn't seeing that at all f- through the correct lens. I wasn't really seeing it. And it's only by me taking time by myself, not necessarily rushing into a new relationship, and finally realizing who I am on my own and loving my own company. You see, I've grown to love my own company more than being in the company of others. You see, when I'm in the company of others, I feel kind of alone because I feel like I've advanced. I'm not putting others down here. And I feel like you'll feel like this as well. Like when you've gone through narcissistic abuse 
and you speak to someone who hasn't gone through it, um, their comprehension of the evil in the world is not on the same level as yours. And your comprehension of the world seems to evolve and ascend and you start to become more conscious. You see, if you find yourself just rushing into a new relationship, you, you, you miss out on this whole chunk of self-discovery and literally creating a bond with yourself for yourself. And I feel like it's so powerful because the reason we was in these relationships is because from childhood, they've brainwashed us with these films, these Disney films and the prince and the princess. And, you know, so you have this envision in mind that's happily ever after but when you become when you grow in consciousness you understand that getting married and being with someone isn't exactly the happily ever after that's just the beginning that's just the beginning of the journey you need to grow with someone in order to you can't just rush in with someone let your heart and feeling guide you with this person you know you've got to separate the the, the heart and the mind you know, it's like your heart can be telling you one thing. That's why we was following our hearts with these people. We was just addicted to the love bomb and we we was overlooking all of the faults. You know, even if eventually you come round to think, nah, this person was abusive, like I did, eventually come round to the, to the facts of the matter, right? It's still like I should have realised a lot sooner on, but maybe it was just the will of God that I didn't awaken when I was with them, you know, it took me some time to awaken to what really happened. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I've been able to find my closure. I don't want anyone who has discarded. I mentioned this in a video. I think it was on the other channel yesterday, but I don't want anyone who's been discarded to feel like a reject. You see what I mean? Because that's how they're trying to make you feel. But when you understand the, the true nature of the situation, and how much you've actually affected their lives and impacted their lives for the better. And they go on with other, other supplies but have feelings towards you and re-idolize you. And they're going through a whole process of themselves. It brings you that closure to finally understand that, you know, it wasn't you. Because there's so many no, um, empaths, sorry, that will go through these situationships with narcissists and be blaming themselves after, you know. Be listening to narcissist videos and be saying, oh, am I the narcissist? Thinking that they're the narcissist. And it's like, it's because of all the gaslighting, the manipulation, the way the narcissist made you believe you was in the wrong. You know, the narcissist involved in my life really tried to make me feel like I was in the wrong. And it's only going through that journey of self-discovery and healing that I've realized and come to terms with the fact, no, it was not my fault. It was not my fault. I was put through reactive abuse a lot. So my anger and rage was always taken as reactive abuse, you know, but they was abusing me and then causing me to react in other different times and then scrutinizing my reaction as if I'm bad. And then, then I would apologize and, you know, they was manipulating me to the highest degree possible. They was manipulating me. And I just want you to take this, healing journey seriously because where you're going in your life you know your next steps are vital and crucial to enhance and enrich your life you want to enhance and enrich your life you don't just want to go back out there and settle with someone who's less than not really worthy you've still got feelings of your ex and you're in this situation with someone new and you've got feelings of your ex and you're thinking about your ex and you're with this new person you know like I don't think I'm going to think of them. Like, I've gone on such a healing journey. I don't... I, even when I make the videos, I don't even really think about them. It's just part of my past. Like, I just refer to points and use the information and digest it and um, spill it out to you lot, like, in the way that I do. But I don't really even truly think about them as such. Um, but early on in the journey, you know, you go through real rumination. You know, they, they're severely occupying a space in your mind and your heart. And it takes a lot to detach from that, you know, a lot of inner work. And I just feel like if you want the best successful future, 
taking a period of time where you're focusing on yourself for yourself, healing, trying to achieve in other areas of your life, realizing that this void that you feel, this emptiness that you may feel early on, or even sometime after, this void that you feel, replace that with discovery of yourself, replace that with achieving your goals, setting ambitions, having ambition, setting goals, achieving those goals, or at least attempting to. You see what I'm saying? Like having goals, and maybe if we, if we fail at these goals, it's better to be uh, attempted whatever we was trying to pursue in life, whatever it is, even if it's in work, business, whatever. Like it's better to try something out, fail at it, than never to do it at all, you know. And that's why that void in your life you can replace with meaningful things to impact the world, you know. Different things. You could do different things. It could be business things. It could be writing a book. It could be artwork. It could be making videos online the same as I'm doing with YouTube. It could be various things, whatever you choose to do, you know. And that's what I feel like you going on the healing journey helps you become. And it and it helps you lose the codependency issues that we did suffer from. Because that was a flaw from our side. We did have codependency issues. And that's why we felt the severity of the breaking up of the relationship so badly because we do have codependency issues or we did have codependency issues. But the longer that you spend by yourself, for yourself, doing things by yourself, um, you lose that codependency. You lose that need and want and desire to be validated by other people. It's like you don't even need it anymore. You don't need the validation. And you become your old existence in the way that you used to be becomes so alien and foreign to you that you don't you, you realize you don't need to behave like that and this is why if you get close to someone and you're planning on having a new relationship after you've healed and stuff and you see some toxic traits i think you have enough strength in you to just pull out of it straight away just get out of the relationship because you've seen some toxicity get out quietly this first incident prepares us to how to deal with future incidents with narcissists you know i believe the best way to get out of an individual um in, in encounter with a narcissist is to pack your bags and get out quietly you know i don't think we should take it out with them i don't think we should call them a you can call them a narcissist if you want but i'm saying it's better to just get out and keep your own peace of mind you know get away from them and that's what i believe all this preparations for it's not necessarily that we're going to go, maybe you will, but it's not necessarily we're going to go from the narcissistic relationship to finding someone true and honest and loyal. Just like the narcissist doesn't go from us and find something happily ever after either. They, they make it out that it's happily ever after. They make you believe it. They make you doubt yourself. But it's not really, you know, on the basis of probability and it's not really probable that they're gonna jump out of a relationship with you who is an empath who was true honest loyal kind loving and go with someone who's true honest loyal loving kind it's not like they're gonna be able to do that and that's why they're plagued with a lot of regrets and resentment because they begin to re-idolize you after they're in these in new situationships but if you just take your healing journey seriously you get a lot of clarity you get a lot of closure and there's no particular time frame that I would suggest. I would say it's when you know you're ready, however long that takes. You know, however long it takes for you to, for, for when you know you're ready, for when you know it's the right time, then you can start looking, you know. But take a period of time, at least focusing on your healing, focusing on your codependency issues, focusing on attachment issues negative issues with inside yourself not not devaluation negative but just negative things where we where we overlooked flaws and stuff like that where we overlooked mistakes from the narcissist things like that you know focus on things like that um building your discernment um i think it's all crucial because it just gives you an awareness of when you engage with other people 
you have this awareness about you that you don't fall in too deep. That's that's how I feel I am now. You know, if I speak to other people, I don't fall in too deep and I see patterns of toxicity. I see patterns of toxicity and it makes me say, I shouldn't go down that route. That route is, if I go down that route, I'm just basically saying, you know, I'm just going to make the same mistake as I did before, you know. So, anyway, it's something to think about. Just, just I would advise taking a period of time healing. Sometimes it happens just the way it flows. And that's the way it happened with me. Just the way my life flowed. I didn't have anyone telling me, take the healing journey seriously. I didn't really find any information like that online. That's why I'm giving you the tips now to give you preparation of what to expect in the future, you know, and choosing the right path, you know. It's, um, how would I say it? Early on, you do get inundated with a sudden urgency to move forward. You do. It's inevitable. You feel that. Um, that drive to, to pursue a new relationship But it's I think it's your ego Like just trying to repair wounds Thinking let me find someone else Because the narcissist has found someone else And I feel like once you get over that And you feel like I don't I, I feel better like Single you know To be proud of like do you know I'm better I feel better being single I feel more proud being single And actually building your life meaningful things in your life you know there's people i've spoke to they're gonna go back to university or they're gonna go to college or they're gonna go and study something you know doing there's, there's various pursuits you can go in life and i'm telling you i failed at my studies when i was with a narcissist i i i didn't achieve my studies in, in my field of work i didn't i had the money to purchase the exam and everything, and I spent the money on with the narcissist, and it was like it was a sabotage. I didn't, I wasn't prospering. And if I was still with them now, my mind would be so closed. I would be even more closed off to the world and reality. I'd just be in a bubble. So I've awoken, and you've awoken, and it's just take a period of time for yourself, by yourself, however long that might be. I don't know what the time frame is for you, what you need. But everyone's different. I needed a bit longer time frame. Um, you know, I'm still healing now. Even now, I'm still healing, I believe. I believe healing goes on for life because we was put through an abuse situation. So we do have... It's, it's, it's a lifetime journey of healing. But selecting a period of time where you appropriately apply the right things for your life is crucial, I believe. So anyway, thank you for watching today. Please press the like and the subscribe button. If you'd like to donate to the channel, you can find a link in the description box. And if you'd like a one-to-one -one session with myself, you can also find a link in the description box. Currently, I've got the main channel, the Narcissism channel. So anyway, I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.